Hello, good morning. Welcome to the Joy Business Report. Coming up this morning, Chamber of Petroleum Consumers predicts fuel prices will go up from tomorrow. We have details coming up also. Economist Professor Peter Corte cautions any move to conduct a second round of domestic debt action program as predicted by rating agency Fitch would bring untold suffering on Ghanaians. And the International Monetary Fund team makes significant progress on program engagement with government and other stakeholders as they wrap up visit to Accra today. Details coming up. My name is Daryl Kwao. First, that prices of petrol and diesel are expected to go up from tomorrow, June 16. That's according to the Chamber of Petroleum Consumers, COPEC. However, the price of liquefied petroleum gas, LPG, is expected to remain same. The expected increase in petrol and diesel prices for the second time is largely due to a 4.16% depreciation of the city to the dollar in the last two weeks. Here's Executive Secretary of COPEC, Duncan Amwa, calling on government to remove some taxes on petroleum products to lessen the burden on consumers. The second pricing window for the month of June is set to commence in a few hours. And um, what we pick from the markets, uh, both locally and internationally, uh, together with the Forex bit is that you are likely to pay a little more for petrol, uh, pay a little more for diesel. LPG is likely to remain stable over the period. Uh, we are expecting uh, between two to 5% uh, for the second window, uh, June. And this is uh, simply informed by uh, the Forex uh, position, which has seen the CD from a previous position of uh, averages 11.38 uh, to current 11.87, uh, if you do interbank. Uh, that is some four or 5% variance. Prices of the product itself uh, has not increased. Unfortunately, uh, the city would force all of us to pay a little more for the coming window. That uh, was Duncan Amwa, Executive Secretary of COPEC. Now, Director of the Institute of Statistical, Social and Economic Research, uh, Professor Peter Corte, has said the second round of a domestic debt action program will bring untold hardship on Ghanaians. His statement comes after rating agency Fitch predicted that government may be compelled to undertake the exercise again to reduce the country's debt stock. Speaking to Joy Business, Professor Corte said the commitment from Ghana's external creditors should help restructure the country's total debt. Another round might bring more hardship, might bring more pain, might also bring resistance, a lot of resistance from the public. I think what we went through is painful enough, so I don't foresee any further um, domestic debt exchange. Uh, but we are yet to see what the external creditors will bring on board, and hopefully that may or may not happen. But I don't foresee that happening. Um, given the commitments that we receive from the Paris Club and the, also from the IMF, I believe our external creditors will do the need for so that we don't have a second round of debt exchange. You had director of the Institute of Statistical, Social and Economic Research, Professor Peter Corte. The Western IMF staff are said to have made some significant progress on program engagement with government and other stakeholders. This is what Joy Business has picked up from persons with knowledge of the meetings. Here's George Raffi. The team is wrapping up its visit to Ghana today after being in town for almost a week. The IMF wants to describe this engagement as a normal staff visit. But Joy Business understands that it offered the team an opportunity to track government progress in meeting some of the conditions under the fund program. One can talk about those quantitative and structural reforms that should be met by the end of June this year. This because when the IMF staff meets in November this year for the first program review, they'll be looking at how the country fared when it comes to meeting those benchmarks at the end of this month. Sources say there has been some challenges in meeting some of the conditions, but government insists these targets will be achieved at the end of this month. Some industry analysts have argued that Ghana will realize the full benefits of this program after it passes the first review for the second tranche of funds of $600 million to be disbursed to government. The visiting IMF team should wrap up their last round of stakeholder engagement today to wrap up things before heading to Washington, D.C., USA. 
George Affair with that report. Now, banking analyst Christian Tichijan is calling for a comprehensive education on the operations of financial sector players to reduce cases of fraud. According to him, regular engagement and sensitization is key to curbing the increasing cases of unlicensed entities engaged in various forms of fraudulent activities. His comment follows a warning by the Bank of Ghana to the public against any form of transactions with some 97 unlicensed institutions that are engaged in the provision of loans through mobile applications. Uh, Mr. Jan spoke to Joy Business. Actually, in a, in a technology world, and it has formed parts of the fabric of, of, our, of, of our society. And so you will definitely be left out if you don't keep the pace. But in keeping up with the pace, um, you should have enough education on its risk, of course. And as much as possible, mitigants should also be, be built around them um, as far as the risk associated with them are concerned so that everybody will be protected for, for the ultimate good of, of, of the society. You had a banking consultant, Christian Tisijan. Now, the Chartered Institute of Marketing in Ghana says it will strengthen ties with its research partners to consolidate efforts of players within the marketing space for quality services. This the institute says is to help feed the Ghanaian public with relevant research information to improve the quality of life and enhance the image of the country. Speaking at the 33rd Annual General Meeting, patron for the institute, Professor Stephen Adai called on members to inculcate integrity in their daily activities. One of the things I have found is whether it's a personal brand or an institutional brand or a product or service brand, at the end of the day, integrity wins. You can have a short period of rise, but if you are not a man or a woman of integrity, your product cannot stand the test of what you claim for very soon, you lose out. So that's all that I want to say first is that integrity pays. Sometimes the payment comes very late, but when it comes, it's always solid. You had Professor Stephen Adair, who is patron for the Chartered Institute of Marketing, Ghana. Now, don't hesitate to report suspicious investment companies to the appropriate regulator, such as the Bank of Ghana or the Securities and Action Commission. On today's edition of Investor Eye, a senior manager in charge of risk management department at the Securities and Action Commission, Zakaria Haruna Baba, tells Joy Business what to do after one falls victim to a fraudulent investment scheme. Yes, yes. If you fall victim to these things, uh, we encourage you to report the matter to us in the first place. You report it to SEC. We have our uh, lines. We have the website. Uh, when you go to the website, you have a, a, a complaint uh, button that you can click in and then report this matter to, you, to us. You can also use the, the email address the info at sec.gov.gh. You can report the, the matter to us. You can also call, you can also walk in to us. Uh, however, because these uh, entities are not licensed, they are not regulated, we also encourage the public to report to the law enforcement agency. Uh, we have the Yoko, we have police CID. You can report the matter to them. If they see that that issue falls under our mandate, they will definitely they will contact us. That was Senior Manager in Charge of Risk Management Department at the Securities and Action Commission's Akaria Harina Baba. Investor Eye comes your way uh, next week, Tuesday. Don't miss it. Before we go, let's take a look at the markets. Uh, the commodity markets begin with crude oil open trading at $73 a barrel. Gold lost more than $8, selling at $1,933 an ounce. Cocoa is trading at $3,202 a ton after increasing by $18. On the currency market, that uh, the city going for... Um, 11 cities, 75 pesos to the dollar on the forex or retail market. The pound going for 14 cities, 85 pesos, and the euro uh, selling at 12 cities, 60 pesos. More news on our website, myjournaline.com forward slash business. My name is Daryl Kwao. Thanks for listening. The Super Morning Show uh, continues with Winstonia. He's looking very, um, uh, what should I say? You don't have any. <laughs>